Hey you guys, welcome again to another video and as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys being here. Um, do me a favor, make sure you see the link on the screen right there. That is linktree.com forward slash journey man and woman. That is the page that you need to go to if you want, if you're looking for a certain series that we've done in the past, that's the place you're going to go um, to get the links to all of that, along with the links to, um, you know, our store, which is um, Sabatree.com, um, Chockstock.com um, and other free resources and all of that. That's where you're going to find that. Again, just go to that link that you see on the screen, Linktree.com forward slash journey man and woman we're going to be adding a lot more to it um in the coming days and weeks ahead i've just been very busy with a lot of other things and um but i'm gonna get to it and there's so many resources out here our people need now let's get to it we've been talking about if you've been paying attention on uh, one of the topics that keeps seem like is recurring at least on our platform we talk about the importance of mental health and why this is something that not only needs to be discussed but we need to address that. And um, and I'm going to tell you, there's a, a lot of reasons why, you know, mental health plays um, a key role in relationships that you have with your friends, your neighbors, within marriage, with your children um, and how a, a community can be productive and successful and and, and solid and all of that. It, it really plays a, a, a major role. And, and a lot of times I think when we bring up the, the words mental health, I think for a lot of people, we just kind of equate that as someone that's crazy, short bus, that kind of thing. But it's not that at all. You know, it's it's a wide range of things. It could be depression. It could be um, just an, a, a frustration because it seems like things ain't working out. And as a result, you look for things to kind of um relax your mind a little bit you know what i mean or you know maybe you fall you start getting into other habits to kind of you know to kind of get your mind off of that that thing that was really has really been gnawing at your mental health and so it's a very important topic um and so one of the things ways we've been addressing that here on this platform is by way of uh Samba tree you know because we believe that a lot of things um, um, that we eat or we put on our bodies can contribute to our mental health. That's just one, one example. I mean, there's many other things, but we can't do it all. We can only do what we are able to do. And so for us, it was Samba Tree. And with Samba Tree, as you know, we have all kinds of things such as herbs. We have creams. We have, we, we have a, this kind of principle that we have where it's got to be 100% or at least close to it because the junk that they put in these foods, it's just crazy. And the impact that it has on our bodies and on our minds. I mean, I think a lot of people take it for granted, but it does. So I want you to see this video. That's really the whole purpose of this video here. I want you to check out this video. Um, this is a news report from some time ago, but I mean, if you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe these people. Check it out. The subject of food dyes, artificial coloring, is back in the news along with a mystery that's been around for a while. Is there a connection between certain colors in foods and beverages and hyperactivity or attention deficit behavior? The FDA is looking for a link and then the question becomes, is there enough evidence to ban them or at least require warning labels? Here's NBC's Tom Costello. Cereal, 7 a.m. in the Van family home, and breakfast is in the blender. <laughs> Bananas, strawberries, orange juice, and a muffin on the side. Three years ago, when 8-year-old Riley was showing signs of ADHD, his mom threw out every food containing artificial dyes and flavors. In two weeks, I could tell a difference in my children, in their handwriting, in their focus, doing homework. Here's Riley's handwriting before the new diet and several weeks after. Now the FDA is once again looking at blue 1 and 2, green 3, orange B, yellow 5 and 6, red 40 and red 3. Found in everything from drinks to candies, baked goods, chips, even pickles and mac and cheese. Many doctors, researchers and consumer advocates have long argued there's a link between the dyes and hyperactivity. There's something genetic that's going on. But then along come food dyes and they can trigger it in at least some kids. 
This controversy isn't new. Since the 1970s, the Feingold diet has been all about healthy eating and eliminating dyes from kids' menus. And now there are signs the FDA is changing its opinion. The FDA has always said there is no evidence of an ADHD link, but now says the data suggests their condition may be exacerbated by exposure to a number of substances in food, including but not limited to artificial food colors. Today, the grocery manufacturers of America insisted there is no demonstrable link to ADHD, and we are always producing the safest possible product for our consumers. Now an FDA panel will decide whether food dyes are safe enough to remain on America's store shelves. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. All right, so you saw that. Ain't that crazy? I mean, think of all these different foods out here that our people um, eat. And not just our people, I mean, just in the American diet, in the Western diet, they have all these dyes in there. And, um, and did you see that part in the video where the parent, she showed the handwriting of her child, you know, before and then after? Now, that's just handwriting. Can you imagine what other parts of that child's brain was impacted as a result of consuming those different dyes and stuff like that? Man, I tell you, when I go into the grocery store, it's... I get so frustrated. Oh my goodness. I get so frustrated because I'm kind it's like I can no longer <laughs> in good conscience, I can no longer just go to the grocery store and just, oh, that looks good. Let me just pull that off and let me eat that. Oh, let me get that too. I can't do that anymore. Now I gotta read everything. I mean, even things like salad dressings, for example. Um it's salad I don't have a problem with. It's the dressings. I mean, when you look at the ingredients they put in these dressings, um, I mean, even the ones that they call organic, they put so many things in there that should, that does not belong in there, nor should it belong in there. You know, so even something as simple as that, um, you know, candies is an easy one. I mean, people generally know, leave, you know, try to leave that, keep your sugars at a minimum. But there are so many other foods out there that they where they put these dyes and other additives and things like that that do have an adverse effect on how we process things up here. And so that's what we try to do, you know, try to address on Samba with Samba Tree. But it's not just Samba Tree. I mean, that's just our part. But there's a lot of things that you can do as well, you know, um, as far as being a parent, as an individual and all of that. And really taking serious when you hear these things, because I'm going to tell you, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, it has a direct correlation. What you eat has a direct correlation on how you think and how and, and also how you perceive things spiritually. It's all related. And I'm going to tell you, when I listen to some of these people out here, man, um, you know, some of the emails I get from some people, I can tell something is it's just not all there, you know, and. And it just happens way too often. So do take these warnings very seriously. When you get your food in these grocery stores, don't just grab it because it's going to make the kids, you know, quiet or they love it. You know, all this other stuff. Going to the days, you know, when we were growing up, we were eating Captain Crunch and, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch and all that. Man, I loved that, those things, you know. But when you start looking at the labels and start seeing the stuff that they add in this stuff, Man, it's it's just horrible. And it has these things have a very bad effect on our diets, not just you gaining weight, but also up here too. how you reason with things, how you logically go through things. I can't tell you how many times I've come across people who they just don't have the patience. I'll say, well, here's the information in this book. I'll give them a book. I'll say, here's a link to a book or here's a link to some resources. And a lot of people say, you know what? I don't have time for it. I don't have time. And I, I think a lot of times we'll blame that on social media. But it's also to your diet. You know, if you have a high sugar diet, a lot of times it, it can play a role in your attention span. You know how much time you're willing to invest in reading or researching. You know, you got a lot of people out there saying that I'm a researcher, I'm a researcher. But, you know, but they can't sit still for five, ten minutes to listen to details on certain things, you know, so that they can get the full information. So family, listen, you know, do take these things very seriously uh, when it comes to. So when we talk about mental health or if you hear anybody for that matter talking about it, uh, just know that this is not something that I'm not saying prayer isn't something we shouldn't do. Of course, 
I mean, something that we all should do. But in addition to praying, we should also make sure that we're paying a lot more attention to what we're eating, what we're consuming, what we're putting on our bodies. And we can't trust these people for anything. You literally are entrusting. Do you understand just the intimacy it is when you eat, when you're putting something in your body, when you go to the grocery store and you get that stuff off the shelf, what you're saying to those manufacturers that put that food together is, I trust you enough for you to go into my body to nourish me. But when you look at the labels, they're saying, that's good because we, that means we can put whatever we want in these in this food. And that's exactly what they do. So we have to, you know, so again, it, it's a mindset that we got to come out of, even on, in matters like that. We got some people out there that are farmers or grow their own food. That's great. But not everybody can do it. But there are practical things that you can do, starting with looking what's in your own cabinet, the things that you're buying from the grocery store now. You know, looking for healthy alternatives for your children, you know, um, because, you know, they like to snack. We like to snack. And so, you know, just looking for those healthy alternatives. And um, and that's something we try to do at SambaTree.com. And um, and we're going to be we're going to continue to look for more and more things that we can add to ourselves so that our people can have some options, you know, and um, and we're also working behind the scenes trying to, you know, work with other people as well so that they can do it in their part of the world. So anyway, family, thanks again for tuning in. You guys take care and I'll talk to you again soon.